everyone, Miss Kaylin here, and today's story is called A House for Hermit Crab by Eric Carl. And it's all about oh, this little guy right here. Can you say hi, Hermit Crab? Hi. And one day in January, Hermit Crab noticed he had grown too big for his small shell. And it was time for him to move out and find a new home. So Hermit Crab climbed out of his old shell and began his search. In the next month of February, he finally found a bigger shell. Hermit Crab said, oh, this shell might be perfect for me. Let's see. So he turned and he wiggled and squeezed and squished until he was all the way inside and he fit perfect. I love my new shell, said Hermit Crab, but it's a little plain. I wonder if I can find something to decorate it with. So he began his search. Hermit Crab swam all over, crawling across the ocean floor until one day in March, he came across a field of sea anemones. And Hermit Crab said, oh, sea anemone, you are so beautiful, like a little flower. Would you like to come and live on my new house? And the sea anemone, said, okay. So Hermit Crab gently picked up the sea anemone and placed it on his shell. Perfect, but I need more. So Hermit Crab kept looking. And in the next month of April, he came across a very small sand dollar lying on the ocean floor. And Hermit Crab said, oh, sand dollar, you are so handsome and small. Would you like to come and live on my new house? And the sand dollar said, all right. So Hermit Crab gently picked up the sand dollar and placed it on his shell. Perfect, said Hermit Crab, but I need more. So he kept looking. He looked and looked and in the next month of May, he came across a very unique creature it was a sea slug and hermit crab swam up and said oh sea slug you are so pretty and colorful and hard working would you like to come and live on my new house and the sea slug said i guess so so hermit crab picked up the sea slug and placed it on his new shell Perfect, said Hermit Crab, but I want more. So he kept looking. He looked and looked, and in the next month of June, he came across two small barnacles. And Hermit Crab saw the barnacles and said, Oh, barnacles, you are so tough and sturdy. Would you like to come and live on my new house? And the barnacles said, hmm, okay. So Hermit Crab gently picked up the barnacles and placed it on his shell. Perfect, said Hermit Crab, but I want more. So he kept looking. He looked and looked. And in the next month of July, he came across a school of fish. And they looked like this. Do you know what kind of fish he saw? It's a called a clownfish, just like Nemo. And Hermit Crab said, oh, clownfish, oh my goodness, you would make the perfect addition to my shell. Would you like to come and live on my new home? And the clownfish said, no, I live in sea anemones. Do you have a sea anemone? And Hermit Crab thought, Hmm, do you remember if Hermit Crab has a sea anemone on his shell? Oh, he does. It's right there. It was the very first thing he found. And so Hermit Crab said, oh, yes, actually, I do have a sea anemone and you're welcome to come live inside. So the clownfish swam over and looked and said, oh, that sea anemone would be perfect for me. I'd love to come and live on your new house. 
So if you swam up and inside the new a sea anemone, and now the clownfish has a new home too. Hermit crab was so excited, but I want more, said hermit crab. So he kept looking. He swam and swam until he came across a field of seaweed in August. And he said, oh, this seaweed is exactly what I need. So he used his claws to clip, clip, clip the seaweed and he placed it on his shell. Perfect. And so Hermit Crab kept swimming and he swam and swam inside all of that seaweed. And in the next month of September, he realized it was dark and scary in there. All of the seaweed had blocked out all of the light and he couldn't see where he was going. He needed help. So Hermit Crab stopped moving and he waited and waited and pretty soon an, another fish swam by and this fish oh, is called a lantern fish. And lantern fish are kind of like fireflies because they light up in the dark. They have something called bioluminescence that allows them to glow whenever it's dark out. And so oh, Hermit Crab said, oh, lantern fish, lantern fish, you would be perfect. Would you like to come and live on my shell and light the way for our home in the dark? And the lantern fish said, oh, I think I can do that. So he swam up and attached himself to Hermit Crab's shell. And now everything lit up and Hermit Crab found his way out. He was very excited. And then the next month of October, Hermit Crab, Hermit Crab found some pebbles and he used those pebbles to build a place to hide from large and scary fish on the bottom of the ocean floor. And when he was done, he had a little pebble cave to hide inside. This is perfect, said Hermit Crab. This is exactly where I want to stay. And he was so excited. But in the next month of November, Hermit Crab realized that over the past year, he has been growing and growing and growing. And he was starting to outgrow his new home. Oh no, said Hermit Crab. Pretty soon, I'm gonna have to move out. And in the next month of December, that's exactly what he did. He climbed out of his old home and said goodbye to all of his new friends. He said goodbye to the sea anemone and the sand dollar and the sea slug and the clownfish and the barnacles and the seaweed and the lantern fish, and he left his shell behind so he could go out and search for a new house for Hermit Crab. The end. Can you say goodbye, Hermit Crab? Goodbye, Hermit Crab. Goodbye, everybody. And I hope you enjoyed the story today. It's a fun story. Um, it is, again, A House for Hermit Crab by Eric Carle, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye, everybody.